and thank you for joining me today on Loyal World Info. Another day of the global spinning, another day of global news to digest. I offer a sane, rational voice for an insane, rational time. I will be your host, but first, let me share a little bit about me. I look forward to waking up to the international news like a child opening a Christmas present. I never know how I will act or activities I will do until after I unwrap my present. In the news case, what will I learn? What will it cause me to think about? What will I reflect back on? And what will I share with others? Stay with me and let's open presents together. Now, let's get into today's topics. Okay, so the topics of the day for April 20th, 2020. The U.S. Supreme Court says jurors must be unanimous. A new COVID health app launches. Gaming news. Japan falls. Who disrespects gamers and freebies? COVID can cause brain and organ damage. Animal news. Lions and turtles. And pets being dumped. Canada gun shooting. Mother kills a nine month old. Implementing self distancing while out and about. Self isolate yourself from your family or go outside. Jobless disease. E learning the world is your classroom. All right, let's get into this. On our first topic of the day, the U.S. Supreme Court rules that jury verdicts must be unanimous. Unanimous means 100% or everybody. And there is a reason this caught my eye. But first, let's get into the story and then I will explain it. The Supreme Court on Monday ruled that the U.S. Constitution's guarantee of trial by a jury requires a unanimous verdict in serious crimes handling in a victory to a Louisiana man convicted of a 2014 murder in New Orleans. The court's 6-3 ruling means that Escalaro Romero's, who was convicted on a 10-2 vote, of the 2014 murder of Terence Fielsen, whose body was found in a trash can, will likely get a new trial. Only two of the 50 states, Louisiana and Oregon, have allowed for non-unanimous verdicts. Louisiana updated its law to prohibit non-unanimous verdicts starting last year, but that change does not apply retroactively. Ramirez was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Okay, and this is why this actually, um, that's actually meant something to me. Because you heard how it affected two states, Louisiana and um, Oregon. Now, I listened to um, Crime Podcast, and they had a podcast on about a month ago, and in this one was Oregon. And the guy, the jury was actually 10 to 2. So he did go to jail. And then he did get out off of a new evidence, DNA, that came years later. But that's when it became aware to me that it was not 12-12 for all 50 states. So I am glad that this is being applied among all 50 states now. And everybody will get a chance for a free trial. So I have a question for you. My question, question for you, how are trials handled in your country? And what standard is a jury held to? Does it have one or is it just a judge? Please leave your comments below. I would like to learn how the criminal justice system is handled in your country. Moving on to our second article of the day, this comes from Vietnam, and 
This is a remote health checkup platform for the COVID-19 prevention app. Now, we know Google and other um, Apple whatnot have been making apps to help the health industry. So Vietnam is no exception on this, but let's read about what they have developed. Prime Minister Park attends a ceremony on Saturday to launch the remote medical explanation, explanation and treatment platform, Blue Zone, application to help the community fight the COVID-19 pandemic. In Hanoi, the Prime Minister attended a ceremony on Saturday to launch two new high-tech apps to help prevent, the, prevent and control the virus. The technology will allow medical examinations and treatment to be carried out remotely. The sec second piece of equipment uses a Blue One app and can detect other people nearby who are positive for the virus through previously saved data. This will help authorities track and trace people who have come into close contact with positive patients. At launch, at the launch event, doctors from Hanoi Medical University Hospital used the remote medical examination and treatment platform to connect with the General Hospital of Mok Kong District in the northern mountains province of Lao Ca. During the demonstration, it revealed its ability to carry out electro electrocardiographic constellations and ultrasound scans remotely for people with chronic diseases who should be examined. They also connected online with the General Hospital in Ha Thien City in the central province of the same name and offered an online checkup for a patient in Quang Dong District, a central Thao Hu province. The doctors provided through the constellation, consultations for the patients through the app in their mobile phones in which they can see each other. Meanwhile, Blue Zone is a solution applying Bluetooth low energy with smart, when smartphones are installed with the app they are able to detect others within two meters and memorize data about themselves. It, if an app user is positive for the SARS-CoV-2 known through the saved data, health authorities can identify the F1 who came in close contact with the positive patient and the system will alert the F1 user about the risk of infection. They will also provide, be provide with instructions on to contact the health authorities for assistance. This app is completely confidential, anonymous, and transparent, as it only stores data for the user's phone and does not transfer information to other locations or systems. Now, I'm going to stop there because you do remember that Korea is kind of doing the same thing, but they're using those wristbands with the Bluetooth. And America is doing similar with a, a smartphone app, and probably through Bluetooth as well. So what do you think about people using tracking on you for yourself or for your safety because of others around you? Do you like that or does it scare you that they'll start using it for this, but they'll expand it for many reasons? And my second question for you is what health apps are you using that you would recommend to other people? Please leave your comments below for those two questions. I would love to hear from you. Okay, let's move on to the next three articles. The first article is more on a positive note. The Studio Gabili shares iconic scenes to be used for video call backgrounds. Need more whimsy in your video conferences? Studio Gimsele is now offering wallpapers which can be used as virtual backgrounds in video calls. In the web on its website, the famed Japanese studio 
explained that the wallpapers can legally be used for any non-commercial, non-advertising purpose, such as and teleworking and distance learning. However, the studio requests that the users to provide a link to the site rather than sharing the image files directly. For now, there are eight wallpapers from the movies Narusasu, The Valley of the Wind, La Pearl, Castle in the Sky, Princess Monohaku, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, Phonio, The Secret World, and of our directory, and the tales of the Princess Kagura. Gibaharo said more wallpapers will be added soon. Most video conferences services like Skype, Zoom, and Google Hangout allow users to upload images or video that can be overlaid as the background like a green screens in movies. All right, so anyway, that was pretty cool, and I will leave this website link in below so you can do this on your own time if you want to be a little creative. Now let's get into more serious gaming news. The Convoy 19 Japanese companies have many illnesses within their, within their companies. So I came across this today. And as you know, right now in Japan, there's quite a many cases of the COVID-19. So let's go over the companies that have been affected and how this might affect you on your, your games that you're hoping to come out soon this year. As COVID-19 spreads around the world, Japanese companies are suffering from an outbreak of COVID-19. Konami today announced that uh, two, em two employees were infected. The company said that the two employees had been nursing at home due to poor physical conditioning condition from April 10th and confirmed on April 15th in principle. So Konami has two that are out. In addition, Sony Interactive uh, said that among the Japanese four gaming scenes that they had diagnosed uh, parties as well. They didn't say how many, but they said within their company, some of them. And Square Enix and Capcom is on top of that. And then if you move on to the producer Yoda Saki, who oversees Final Fantasy XIV for Square Enix, he announced on April 10th that Corvana will delay the next patch of the game by a month because they're working from home. Home is limited. Yeah, you know, when you work from home, you don't have all the company equipment, nor do you have all your co-workers right by, around you to help you. SIE Distribution, The Last of Us Part Two, was delayed indefinitely due to logistics issues. However, SIA said that it, that the release of the PS5 developing will not be delayed. All right. Moving on, Capcom and Kojami Productions announced that their employees have been confirmed by Corona-19 through the official website. SIA was infected by one employee that at, at the head office of Tokyo, Capcom was infected by one employee at the head office of Osaka. Wow, so both offices were infected. Meanwhile, the number of cases in Japan has exceeded 10,000. That's quite a bit. Um, so including cruise ships on the 17th and the three months. All right, so we're going to stop there because that's what I wanted to know. But I have a question for you on this article. Um, so many companies are infected with the virus. There will be many delays, most likely. So what games are you looking forward to? And what are and what are they known when are they known to come out? Like, you know, some people want Persona 5 Battle Royale and that's out on the Switch, but it won't be out until next month for the PC. So again, that's my question for you. Leave your comments below. Moving on. You know, if there is one topic 
that is in the news as much as the COVID uh, pandemic, it would be the World Health Organization. And th they made the news in gaming today. So this came from a, the Korean game G-Star newspaper. So who recommends the game? Have you seen this photo? 20-year game addiction by Michael Schock. Now, before I read this article, I think it's funny because basically, the, you know, companies will make up everything as a sickness or illness if they can make more money off of it by exploiting you. A good example of this would be the use of marijuana. Back in the 1960s, marijuana was legal to smoke, but uh, people had to criminalize it because we wanted to make money on it. And then they did slowly, they did that by um, rehabilitation classes in the 1990s and then 2000s. Then they pushed the laws through so that they can legalize it to make, to make money off of you versus you growing it in your backyard. So I think the reason that they make gaming uh, a disease is because it is a number, number one entertainment uh, revenue generator in the whole world. Keep in mind that no one ever made a smartphone addiction uh, a disease yet. All right, so let's get into this article. The, in the era of new contravirus infection, Convoy 19, the number of people spending time with online games has increased. At the same time, spent staying in the house has increased. The World Health Organization classified claim gaming addiction as a disease may last year. All right. Wow. So they're, they're promoting this right now. How disgraceful is that? I don't even know any gamer that looks like that. However, as a new virus uh, bro breaks out, the Who's attitude toward the game changed. He suggested that he play the game Who Secretary General Tenders Garbrix recommended staying at home through his social media on the 21st of last month. We can all listen to music, read books, or play games, he said, on the 30th last month. Who even launched a Play Apart Together campaign that encouraged games as long as social distance is important. It's time to spend time playing games that can communicate face to face so are they being a hypocrite you know when last year they're saying games in an addiction now they're saying it's okay and there you go indeed the use of games has skyrocketed since the virus outbreak hit the world u.s gaming only internet usage increased 75 percent in the first week of the uh, confinement Last month, according to the U.S. news agency Verizon, the British media Daily Mail quoted experts, diagnosis, and reported that the average time for gamers, users, play games has increased by an average of 19%, so about 20%, since the virus outbreak. Forbes, the U.S. economy magazine, said the participation rate in the games is increasing as schools are closed and as a result of the spread of the virus. You know, it's kind of funny. Because, yes, when I was a kid, I had Nintendo and I had access to Atari and all that stuff. But my mom would say, if it's a weekday, you go outside and play. Or you go read a book. Or you go do something. We, I could not watch TV. I could not do anything that had to do with electronics for, for the most part. Weekends was my free time. So why do parents feel compelled to rely on these things or encourage them on their kids, even when they are home. As the phenomenon continues, there are concerns that the gaming addiction's definition of gaming addiction is this. This is the case of where the desire to play a game is not controlled, and the game is given priority over the interest of the daily life. And even if there is a problem in life, such as personal, family, or a job, the symptoms of not being able to stop the game persist for more than 12 months. So basically, in this article, they're trying to show that if you sit, your ankles will get sores because the blood vessels will cramp up. 
They're trying to say that your knees, joints will get stiff, that you're complacent and you'll eat junk food and you'll get a pot belly. You'll hunch your back, you know, like you're looking at the screen uh, in your head. So they're giving all these sicknesses. And what do you think about that? Do you think it's just bad marketing or do you think it's a real disease? If that's the case, what is the difference between gaming and being a typist in a cubicle for eight hours or somebody who's chilling on their smartphone or iPad for eight hours a day? According to foreign media, so, uh, such, such as the British Media Daily Mail, recently released a 3D image that enables game addicts' appearance for the last 20 years. The model was created by game experts showing how bad gaming addiction can affect human body. But I don't believe that because gaming has been around since 1980 in the Atari 2600. Then the name of this 3D model is My Michael, according to the Daily Mail experts, has completed this model based on the data related to the gaming addiction from several sources, including WHO, the United Kingdom National Health Services, and the National Geographic animators were also involved in this 3D work for this visual implementation. They probably got a lot of money donated to them to do this project, but they probably don't mean anything they say. What would Michael addicted to a game look like in 2040 as a result of using the headset for a long time during a game? The skull was deformed by contrast force pressing the head. The hair loss was phenomenal, also occurred under the influence of pressure. Do you think the hair loss is from gaming? And doesn't your skull stop um, growing when you're an adult? So why would the skull be crushed? Due to the lack of sleep and long-term viewing of the monitor, the eyes are completely shut off. For off, the dark circles are dark and the eyes are always red. The skin is pale due to the lack of vitamin D and the lack of sunlight. Okay, I can, I can get to the skin part, but the rest, no. If you're viewing a monitor, you're viewing your, your iPhone, or you're viewing your office computer desk for eight hours a day. Gaming addiction also brought about body deformation as a result of maintaining fixed posture for a long period of time. Michael had a curved back and shoulders. Well, I see plenty of people that are farmers are the ones that carry these carts or wheelbarrows all day long in Vietnam and Korea and China, and they got those backs too, just called working. And so, yeah, this repeatedly the same movement Will, help, will cause arthritis. Well, yeah, but that happens with anything. It also called Nintendo arthritis <laughs> after a name of the game machine. I felt a uh, burning pain in my hand, and I also had carpal tunnel syndrome. Michael overeats during games, and Michael, who is far from exercising, eventually becomes obese instead of instead the water did. He did not drink well, so he was dehydrated. Why? So you tell me he's drinking Coca-Cola and he's only eating junk food. <laughs> All right. The result of tapping the keyboard or mouse repeatedly was severe. There was a so-called PlayStation finger symptom. So, yeah, there you go. There's your PlayStation fingers. <laughs> Lower body health also worsened without expectation. After sitting for a long period of time, your veins began to swell up. Over overseas neutrons, which Michael through the foreign media responded, I look like my neighbor next door. There are there are people like me in my house, and my passport is like a picture. Anyway, I'm gonna stop there. What do you think about this? Do you think gaming is a real addiction or do you think that this is the media just trying to scam money off of people. I don't know. I think it's not an addiction and people should be free to use how, however they want their free time. And there's a reason that it is the biggest entertainment and money spender in the world because it's something that everybody can enjoy. Anyway, here's my question for you on the topic. What do you think about the World Health Organization statement? 
what is the difference between a typist, office worker, a gamer, or somebody on their iPhone all day? Why are people using smartphones for hours not listed as an illness? Leave your comments below. I really want to know. Okay. We are going to move on to the Bangkok newspaper in Thailand. In this article, they actually discuss new medical uh, reports that show how your brain or your other organs outside of your lungs also are affected with the virus. So let's uh, get into these two articles, share a few facts or findings, and then let's he hear your thoughts. Confusion, seizures, strokes, how COVID may affect the brain. So there's your brain, okay? Okay, so in Washington, a pattern is emerging among the COVID-19 patients arriving at hospitals in New York. Beyond fever, cough, and shortness of breath, some are deeply disoriented to the point of not knowing where they are or what year it is. At times, this is linked to the low oxygen levels in their blood. But in certain patients, the confusion appears disproportionate to how their lungs are faring. Jennifer Fortuna, a neurologist at the NYU Landorn Brooklyn Hospital, seeing these patients told AFP their findings were rising concern or were raising concerns about the importance of the coronavirus on the brain and the nervous system. By now, most people are familiar with the respiratory hallmarks of the virus disease that has infected more than 2.2 million people around the world. But more unusual are the signs of surfacing about the new reports from the front lines. A study published in the Journal of American Medical Association last week found that 36% of 214 Chinese patients had neurological symptoms ranging from loss of smell and nerve pain to seizures and stroke. Well, yeah, well, let's keep in mind they're Chinese, and well, China could have done many things to them. A paper in the New England Journal of Medicine this week examined 58 patients in Starsbrook, France, found that more than half were confused or agitated aggravated with brain images surfacing implement implementation. Implementation means swelling up. You're being you're being hearing you've been hearing this at the that is a breathing problem, but it also affects what we most care about, the brain. If you become confused if you're having problems thinking, those are reasons to seek medical attention, he said. The old mantra, don't close, don't come in unless you're short of breath, this probably doesn't apply anymore. Viruses and the brain. It isn't completely surprising to scientists that the SARS-CoV-2 might implement the brain and nervous system, since this has been documented in other viruses, including HIV, which can cause cognitive decline if untreated. Viruses affect the brain in one of two main ways. Now, I'll explain Michael, a neurologist. One is by triggering the abnormal impulse response known as the chytical storm that causes inflammation. inflammation of the brain called autoimmune anomalysis. The second is a direct infection of the brain called the viral apoptosis. How might this happen? The brain is protected by something called the blood-brain barrier, which blocks foreign substances but could be breached if compromised. Yeah, the blood-brain barrier is pretty hard to breach, uh, so it is surprising that this can break through. However, since loss of smell is a common symptom of the coronavirus, 
have some hypersized, the nose might be the pathway to the brain. This remains unproven and the theory is somewhat undermined by the fact that many patients experiencing amnesia don't go on to have severe neurological symptoms. In the case of the novel coronavirus, doctors believe, based on the current evidence, the neurological impacts are more likely to result of overactive immune response rather than brain invasion. To prove the later is happening, the virus must, must be detected in the seropropsal fluid. This has been documented once in a 24-year-old Japanese man whose case was published in the International Journal of Infectious Diseases. The man developed confusion and seizures in, and an imaging showed the brain was infected. But since this was the only known case so far, the virus test has has yet been validated for spinal fluid. Okay, and they, and they say they can't do spinal fluid later in the article because when you're on a ventilator, which these people are in a coma, it's very hard to pull the, the stem cells out of the right proper portion of the body. So they have a hard time gathering the research to do it. But what do you think about this? What do you think about these findings? How about the lifetime effects of recovering from an illness? So whether it's convoid 19 or maybe it's multiple sclerosis, maybe it's arthritis, maybe it's AIDS, maybe it's cancer or, or whatever. How has, um, have you had an illness that you, that you had recovered from, but it left you with a physical or, ex or external body, internal or external body damage? How did it change your life? Like, you know, some, I had a friend, she got seizures because um, of a head injury so she could no longer drive and and she was she had to be confined had to have a helmet wherever she went so that changed her life and you know what we're going to read one more article while we're on this not just lungs convoy 19 can damage others so this one actually came from seoul like i told you there was more than one article South Korea reported that over the weekend, the first case of heart disease linked to the virus infection, suggesting that the virus, most knownly known for causing respiratory disorder, may also be a wider spectrum of complications. In Daegu, Korea's worst affected city, with 64% of the total viruses, tallied 21-year-old woman without previous medical conditions. So she got it heart virus. The young patient initially exhibited typical symptoms of the viral virus, including a cough, sore throat, fever, diarrhea, but she was confirmed as a mild case in late February. But around three days after being diagnosed, she started experiencing worsening breathing difficulties and had to be taken to the intensive care unit. The university Hospital, a carnivorous only hospital for severely or critically ill patients. Upon the MRI X ray CT images, her chest showed signs of infections in the lungs as well as the heart, Kim said in a phone interview. Her chest scans revealed an enlarged heart and uh, pat patterns of the viral ammonia, such as ground glass oplets, she said. Well, in large heart, doesn't that mean you're full of love? Her cardiac size, less than 50% of the thorax in a healthy person, was estimated to be about 65%. Well, we need to give this heart to the Grinch who stole Christmas. He said, explaining that the disproportionate cardiac ratio means that her heart's ability to pump blood had been compromised. She was hospitalized for a month, about a fourth of which was spent in intensive care. Although she has since recovered, the extent of the cardiac damage from the virus may prove long-lasting, he said. Okay, and so again, this one goes into 
how we, your heart and now your brain can be affected. So again, what do you think about these findings? Or do you think it's that um, these people that have recovered, that they uh, that they'll they can just go on with a merry life, or will they have permanent disabilities, permanent side effects for the rest of their life? And again, how about you? What illness have you had or disease have you had that caused you to change the way you do, you do your daily life? Please leave your comments below. I want to hear. It is time to move on to a better aspect in the daily news. And this is about animals in today's news. It's one of my favorite things to look forward to. So today I have three stories to share about animals. And the first one is from the Asian Insider. And the lions are taking a very taking a very easy South Africa lockdown. Yeah, look at that. They're us laying in the road. This is kind of where, you know, the safari trucks would like go through, you know, the wildlife park. Oh, hey, the lions are, eh, let's just chill on the street. Every, even lions are enjoying the peace and quiet. A set of new photos in South African's Congo National Park shows. The images show a, pr a pride of lions lounging in, on the road, seemingly unperturbed by the presence of the photographer, the park ranger, Richard, uh, Richard's his name. The lion of pride are usually resent on Campion Park in the area of Kruger tourists do not see. He said it was it this afternoon they were lying on the tar road just outside the open Opren rest center. On a normal day there would be so busy with tourists but since the shutdown the, the lockdown has made it a quieter place. Now there's actually a few more photos here. So you got that one we just saw on the left, and then you got this one here. Oh, it looks so cute. Here, let's you know what. Here we go. And then we got two more. Oh, uh, <laughs> now those are cool. All right. So lying on the road during the daytime is unusual because under normal circumstances there would be traffic. Yes, of course. And that pushes them back into the bush or bushes of the park. While the photos are striking, the lockdown hasn't led to many changes in animal behavior. Okay, this they just occupy places that would normally they would normally shun when there are tourists. People should remember that KMP is still largely a wild animal park. All right, now I'm gonna stop here because uh, there's two more articles. And if you also recall, yesterday I showed you how this similar thing is happening in Yosemite National Park in California, America. But let's move across the world now. Now we are going to, well, not necessarily Bangkok, but deserted beaches lure rare turtles to build most nests in 20 years. Wow. Who has, has anybody here ever had a pet turtle? You know, I never had, but my my uh, my next door neighbor like lizards and turtles, but not the water turtles. So let's read this article. They look really cute. Rare leather leatherback sea turtles have built the largest number of nests in two decades on the beaches in Perndak Pongnang ferret of tourists because of the virus pandemic. So yeah, this is like in South Thailand. What from wild boars patrolling the Yasolaki city of Hafra to deer venturing into London suburbs, virus closures are drawing wildlife into the abandoned streets of many cities. In Thailand with 2,765 infections and 47 deaths, Travel curbs ranging from a ban on international flights to an appeal to citizens to stay home have brought a collapse in tourism numbers but freed up the beaches for wildlife. The 11 turtle nest authorities have found since the last November were the highest number in 20 years. 
said the director of the biological center. This is a very good sign for us because many areas for spawning have been destroyed by humans, he said. No such nests have been found near the previous five years. Okay, so that's where it's going to stop. And I have one more article today, but it's not necessarily the best of articles, but it's about animals. More pets are being dumped during the MCO said the Malaysia Animal Association. So now we're moving from Thailand to Malaysia. But I'm sure this is happening across most of the world. Oh, how cute. Right. Meow, meow. Mm-hmm. Kuala Lumpur, April 20th. The dumping of pets, animals such as cats and dogs, has tripled around the city following the implementation of the MCO, Mandatory Lockdown Control said the Malaysian Animal Association. He said this was based off information provided by community feeders who reported that they have spotted newly abandoned animals and sev- at several locations such as remote industrial and non-residential areas. He, he said it's irresponsible owners selected these areas on purpose to cover their activities not caring about the safety and welfare of animals. For example, the area usually have five dogs, normally by yesterday, has tripled to 18 or 20. All these dogs are friendly and good health, clean, non-aggressive, he said, when contracted by, contacted by Brenda here today. At the same time, I also did not rule out the possibility that the pet owners were acting out of fear of infection from the animals and are not able to look after them. And they have lost their source of income. So, yeah, so what do you do? What do you do if you lost your job and you have no income? Yes, some countries have cash to help you out. Other countries have none. Furthermore, this said that pets can get you sick. Their fear of that. Now, I did an article like two weeks ago, and it said dogs are okay, but the article was about tigers and lions, and they actually can pass, they can catch the disease from humans, and they can pass it to other cats. So I honestly can understand getting rid of cats, but the article said that dogs and a lot of other animals were okay, but cats were kind of unique in this situation. This is not a humane act. Why for the love for the pets faded? What is the fate of these cats and dogs? Who is considered the owners as their family members all though this while? He questioned. In this regard, he, he also called the authorities to implement microchips identification systems as compulsory as it would help detect the owners who dumped the animals. You know, what do you think about that? You know, I kind of, I can go both ways. I can see, yes, it's a crime to let an animal go, and you should you should not necessarily do that. But what do you want them to do? Take it to the pound, and then after 30 days, they kill it? Um, otherwise, they're going to say, oh, hey, you, you got rid of this animal. Now give us $100, $200, $500. And they're going to put fines or stuff on that. And that's not exactly fair either. So I don't know. What would you do to, to encourage people to keep their pets? Or how would you punish these people who got rid of them? All right. Meanwhile, in Lanesar Nor Nebraska, Nor said the pet owners who failed to provide proper lodging, health care, and diets to their pets can be charged under the Animal Welfare Act. Wow. It is, it is an... It is an offense under Section 29A of the Act, which carries fines not less than 20,000 RMB and not more than 100,000 RMB. Wow, that's pretty high, actually, because 100 RMB is $3. So, and go to jail for three years. Okay, so, and my question, uh, next question for you is, what do you think about these findings? How do you think uh, lifelong effects for recovering from the, well, if you have a pet, right? So what do we do? What would you do if you had to get rid of your pet? Would you let it go? 
Would you still feed it? How? How would you earn money for it? And what do you think about these people who throw their pets away? I myself was in um, Korea once, and um, I lived on the East Coast. And somebody threw their pet away in Seoul, which is almost the West Coast. And so a foreigner found it, a foreigner put it on a website. I went across Korea, it was a white poodle, and I picked it up and I took it home with me. I named him Munch, and he was cool, he was a cool dog. So I adopted a homeless pet once. And another time, I was, dry, I was walking home in Vietnam, and this little kitten that could fit in my shirt pocket I fell off a motorcycle, it was like a little baby kitten. And I adopted that one too. So I look after them. But what about you? Again, leave your comments below. Moving on to the crime today. An 18, this is in Japan. An 18 year old woman arrested over the death of a nine month old son in Fukushima. Fukushima, by the way, is the place that had that huge um, tidal wave that melted down a nuclear uh, energy facility. So, the police of Akuha, Fukushima, perform, preference, have arrested an 18-year-old unemployed woman on suspicion of killing her 9-month-old son at her home. According to the police, the mother, who cannot be named because she's a minor, and by the way, yeah, Japan is 19 when you're an adult, suffocated her son early Friday morning. Um, they reported she, she called 119 and around 2.40 a.m. and said her son was not breathing. The baby was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The hospital contacted the police who determined the mother for, took in the matter for voluntary questioning. Police said she admitted to killing her baby and she was charged with murder on Saturday. Police quoted the woman as saying she was stressed out from the child rearing. She lived in the house with other members of her family. There was no information on who the baby's father was. All right, so here's my question about this. This is why this, again, was brought to my attention. We see many reports about DV, domestic violence, but what can we do to make sure children are safe with their mothers during these times of uh, that are very stressful because mom is spending more time with the children. The children maybe are at home because she's homeschooling them or they're staying inside when it's playtime. So how can we make sure the children are safe and she does not do any harm to the kids? And now saying that, let's move on to the bigger crime of the day. At least 16 killed in Canada's rampage and the suspect is dead. Don't you notice how most of the times they die versus uh, facing trial? In Montreal, a gunman who, who drove a mock-up police, mock police car killed at least 16 people in Atlantic Canadian shooting rampage. Federal police said the worst case of its kind in Canadian's history. The shooter, identified as Gabriel Watman, of 51, was shot dead by officers after a 12-hour manhunt in Nova Scotia province, ended on Sunday morning. Among the victims was a veteran female constable with the Royal Canadian Mountain Police, which also handles multiple and prov provincial law enforcement in the province. All right. Police sa said the suspect had been on the run since Saturday night when the officers were alerted to shots fired in the town of Potopiku, around 100 kilometers of Halifax, capital of At Attica province. The gun violence in Canada is far less than its neighboring United States. Now, weapons are more strictly controlled, and the killings where the country's worst was the worst since 1989, when a gunman murdered 14 female students at Montreal's Ilica, whatever that is. But wait a minute, if if 14 died there, but 
they said that they killed he killed 60 so wouldn't this be hit the worst now the victims included a female RCPT MT officer um, a 23 year old veteran of the force while the second officer was injured in Novikoskoka several victims were discovered both outside and inside the house of the town sparkling a 12-hour manhunt through the multiple com com communities the search for the suspect ended this morning when the suspect was located and i can confirm that he is deceased the chief said all right so i'm going to stop it there but i want to know what is or what are the gun laws in your country and do you have a gun no, I'm, I'm, I'm from America, and you have to have background check, and you have to register your ammo, and you have to have, sometimes you have to have a, med, a mental check, too. So, it's kind of strict. But what about your country? And so leave your comments below. I want to know if you can own a gun in your country, and what, and what you must do to own a gun. And, again, what must we do to keep our children safe in case a mother might go off the handle? Leave your comments below. Moving on to the crime today. An 18, this is in Japan. An 18-year-old woman arrested over the death of a 9-month-old son in Fukushima. Fukushima, by the way, is the place that had that huge um, tidal wave that melted down a nuclear uh, energy facility. So, the police of Akuaha, Fukushima, perform Preference have arrested an 18 year old unemployed woman on suspicion of killing her nine month old son at her home. According to the police, the mother, who cannot be named because she's a minor, and by the way, yeah, Japan is 19 when you're an adult, suffocated her son early Friday morning. Um, they reported she, she called 119 and around 2.40 a.m. and said, her son was not breathing. The baby was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The hospital contacted the police who determined the mother for took in the matter for voluntary questioning. Police said she admitted to killing her baby and she was charged with murder on Saturday. Police quoted the woman as saying she was stressed out from the child rearing. She lived in the house with other members of her family. There was no information on who the baby's father was. All right, so here's my question about this. This is why this, again, was brought to my attention. We see many reports about DV, domestic violence, but what can we do to make sure children are safe with their mothers during these times of uh, that are very stressful because mom is spending more time with the children. The children maybe are at home because she's homeschooling them or they're staying inside when it's playtime. So how can we make sure the children are safe and she does not do any harm to the kids? And now saying that, let's move on to the bigger crime of the day. At least 16 killed in Canada's rampage and the suspect is dead. Don't you notice how most of the times they die versus uh, facing trial? In Montreal, a gunman who, who drove a mock-up police, mock police car killed at least 16 people in Atlantic Canadian shooting rampage. Federal police said the worst case of its kind in Canadian's history. The shooter, identified as Gabriel Watman, of 51, was shot dead by officers after a 12-hour manhunt in Nova Scotia province, ended on Sunday morning. Among the victims was a veteran female constable with the Royal Canadian Mountain Police, which also handles multiple and pro provincial law enforcement in the province. All right. Police sa said the suspect had been on the run since Saturday night when the officers were alerted to shots fired in the town of Potopiku, around 100 kilometers of Halifax, capital of 
Attica province. The gun violence in Canada is far less than its neighboring United States, and weapons are more strictly controlled, and the killings where the country's worst was worse since 1989, when a gunman murdered 14 female students at Montreal's Ilica, whatever that is. But wait a minute, if, if 14 died there, but they said that they killed, he killed 60, so wouldn't this be hit the worst now? The victims included a female RCPT MT officer, um, a 23-year-old veteran of the force, while the second officer was injured. In Novikoskoka, several victims were discovered both outside and inside the house of the town, sparkling a 12-hour manhunt through the multiple com com communities. The search for the suspect ended this morning when the suspect was located, and I can confirm that he is deceased, the chief said. All right, so... I'm going to stop it there, but I want to know what is or what are the gun laws in your country, and do you have a gun? No, I'm, I'm I'm from America, and you have to have background check, and you have to register your ammo, and you have to have sometimes you have to have a, med, a mental check too. So it's kind of strict. But what about your country? And so leave your comments below. I want to know if you can own a gun in your country and what and what you must do to own a gun. And again, what must we do to keep our children safe in case a mother might go off the handle? Leave your comments below. We're moving on to the next article of the day. Five children, four from the same family, among the 596 new virus cases confirmed in Singapore on April 19th. Now, five children aged between 1 and 12 are among 596 new confirmed cases of the COVID-19 in Singapore reported on Sunday. Based on the summary of the case shared by the Military of Health, MOH, among the five, cas the five new viruses, four are linked to the same family member, who tested positive for the virus earlier. The, the other child, also a family member of another previously announced case. Now, what I wanted to really talk about here, because fine, these children are 5, 9, 11, and 12, but what I want to talk about is the governments, they're saying to isolate, stay in your house, don't go outside. But how do you isolate yourself from your family members? And how are you doing interactions different? For example, are you still all eating dinner together? Do you still share food together? Do you, do you pass each other the TV remote control if you, if you watch TV? Are you playing video games together where you both have a paddle, but maybe you, you swap paddles? Um, you know, are are you playing board games together? Are you close together when you're doing yoga? I don't know. So what are you doing now? And what have what activities have you changed that you kind of like you're drawing distance from your family members? What have you changed? Like maybe you're staying in your room or maybe you're just on your iPad while they're downstairs doing something else. Maybe they're studying. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. And furthermore, what do you think? Do you think this family or yourself would be better off if you were actually outside? Because remember, if you're outside, you're getting sunlight, it's hotter, and you get the vitamin D, and you're out and about versus confined places. I would like to know your comments below on what's the best way to be inside or outside, and again, how you would protect yourself from your family and how it's changed. Now, this is the, my last article of the day, and most likely will be my most controversial article of the day. And this came from the Australian, okay? And the, the article is, jo Jobless Disease, a Greater Threat to Far More People. Okay, so, the impact of the virus on gender equality cannot 
that well, caught the attention of a group of the U.S. economics this month. A pandemic will have a disproportionate negative effect on women and their employment opportunities, they wrote in the National Bureau of Economic Research. Really, let's get into this together. I, I think I can I disprove almost everything they say. Devastated hospitality and retail sectors are dominated by women and children. Se centers have closed. Parents have no choice but to watch their kids themselves. So, so wait a minute. You had a kid and you can't watch your own offspring? Why? Isn't that your responsibility to watch? Aren't you supposed to educate the kid? Why are you putting that kid onto society? Be a mom. Grandparents and neighbors aren't available because of social distancing. Mothers are likely to be more affected than fathers, they said. Okay, and I totally disagree with this too. First off, when we talk about hospitality and retail sectors, it's not the man's fault, first off, that the women hire in gender preference themselves. Or second, it's not the man's fault that the women go into those fields. The women go into those fields because it's jobs they choose. So if they, if they get laid off, then it's not our fault. Not to mention hospitality is mostly women begging. If, if they are your, your bell girl, if they are your waiter, if they are whatever, they're providing you companion time or comfort time, whatever, and they want a tip at the end. So basically, in my view for tipping has always been, it's a company that's saying you can beg on our property versus being illegal to beg on the street. And these, these, and these women have all the time in the world to go get more education or change a job. And as it says about men not being affected, I may disprove that because for any woman who loses her job, she'll go to the welfare office, no problem. Any man that loses his job has far less welfare. He has some, but then it's taken to all the fathers who have to provide for their family. If the man loses the job, the wife, the wife and the kids run away, then the court says, give us money, but he has no job. He goes to jail. The girl has no money, the government gives her the money. So I don't believe this article whatsoever. No, I'm not married and I don't have any kids, but it's very biased. Okay. And women do not want to be responsible for their kids. My mom was responsible for all her kids and she loved her family. On a brighter note, the COVID-19 may erode social norms that currently lead to a lopsided distribution of division of labor in housework with child and child care. With more men working from home, they'll be getting used to changing nappies and helping with the housework, and women dominate nursing and other frontline health roles. Well, again, yeah, the, the, the health, the nursing, the nursing is women are doing that by choice because they're nice, good, high-paying jobs, and they hire in group preference. And if a woman is pulling the man away from doing his working from home, then he's not earning money. Furthermore, there's already been many studies that said women do not like it when a man does housework. Now, I'm not saying men shouldn't do housework, but there's reports that women do not like it. If you found this analysis silly, it's because there are too many economics in the world. Not not because they are doing their job. The four authors from the U.S. and German universities are looking at the data, making inferences, and weighing up how the cost of the virus fall to different groups that qualify for live terms. You know, yeah, if I recall right, the man is paying for the house. So if the woman is doing things around the house, she's earning her rent, so to speak. That contrast was a quite bizarre open letter to the Australian government signed more than 1,000 econo economics that called the trade-off between health and economic outcome a false discussion, urging hard lockdowns until the coronavirus can be comprehensively addressed. What might be the 3.6 million Australians who may soon be out of work as a direct result of the government regulations, according to the report by the Grattan Institute, make a false distortion, distinction. The lockdown might be considerably shorter if, these, if those calling for it 
included the professors had to take a large pay cut until it was lifted. All right. Now I want to get down here a little more. Uh, that basically, what do you think? Do you think that women are, or men are suffering more from this? Again, I kind of gave my points that I think this could have a harder effect on men. Men are not going to are going to lose their wife. They're going to lose access to their kids, and the jobs that are going away are female heavily dominated anyway. They're basically breeding grounds to beg for money. You know, I from South Korea and um, Japan and other countries, there is no tipping at all in these countries. You you do your job for pride, and there's no welfare either. So give me your thoughts on this below, and what will you do to make ends meet? I would really would like to know. Moving on, you know I like giving things that you can do while you're home. So far, I have given you traveling trips that you that you can do with um, Singapore through walking through their videos. I've given you Yale um, online classes and. I have given you zoo information, like things you can do online. Today, I found the world is your classroom from classroom 10 fun ways to homeschool. So running out of homeschooling ideas, take the kids on virtual tourage, voyage with these interactive learning tools uh, from safaris to cooking lessons with Indian chief. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go over these a little bit. So this is our first one, and this one says travel the wonders of the world. Online tools such as, as Google Street View Treks and you, you Visit Paramus are water lust, in, including way to bring the atlas of the globe to life for kids. From the sky to the vast Pata complex of Jordan's blend seamlessly with the arid desert blue dive down with treks. And you will soon be walking in the Nabatatas. Over in Peru, you visit 3D, 360 degree of the Machu Picchu, Revere's fact for the folklore. Okay. So there's, again, street view tracks and you visit Pargomas. And English Heritage's online tour of Stonehenge. I think that would actually be really good. Tell me if you would like me to do any of those on our channel. Okay, next, meet real life explorers. We're in the middle of the Columbia ice field in Canada. And after days of storms and sun is finally shining. So, in this case, we're here to monitor the impacts of the climate change, she says. With the giant ice drills already. All right. So if you're interested in Canada and you want to see about ice and mining, then you can go to nationalgeographics.org and with your child. Okay. Go on a safari. Wow. <laughs> in this case, whoa! It's it is massive. My two boys cheer me in delight. As a ranger, Lapon pulls apart a streaming pile of elephant dong, dong is poop, fetus, just in front of our sofa. It's never been easier and cheaper to head off into the bush in search of our favorite creatures and critters by partnering with Wild Earth TV, conservation minded travel company, and beyond, has created a visual sofa safari to live safari drives to take place daily from Nago and Naja private game reserves in South Africa with a 45 minute kiddies drive each afternoon. For something more on the hands, Smoko Koto's bite sized bush lessons introduced kids to tracking, tree planting, rock and fly camping. Okay. Now this one looked cool. I wanted to do this one too. Alright. The Sixth Sense Lugu has kickstarted a 10 week junior marine biology program for building underwater conservations. After exploring turtles, manates, rays, dolphins, seagrass, and reefs, with Larma's 10 marine biologist children are encouraged to get creative at home 
on cycling, crafting, drawing, and storytelling about what they've learned. Homework can even be sent in by to be marked. Even marine biologist specialists in a different field of conservation and research for medical underwater informative. So this one is sixsenses.com. Again, that looks really cool. If you want me to do that, if it's like a live thing, let me know. Understand the illegal wildlife trade. Wow. Protect us from poachers. Killed for their tails. Killed for their horns. Giraffes. Rhinos. Killed for their tusks. Elephants, cheetahs, cubs are taken as pets. Oh, that's true. All right. So Charity Tells is an online resource designed to help kids understand why and how the world's most endangered species can be protected. The Animal Ambassadors pack of resource includes more than 20 hours of activities from how to draw animals with illustrators to storytelling and photography lessons with David Yum. Older kids may prefer Old Pacha's Conservatory Visual Classroom, where leading conservationists discuss what it's like to work with a species on the brink of extinction. And this is at Tales to Tell. Learn how to make street art. Ravioli. Ooh. I actually like that. Get your guides. The world's The World is at Home series hopes to bring its local run tours to lockdown screens worldwide to keep keeping guides who are stuck in their home in work. Kick off with Garafi and Siki making their workshop with street artist Kuba Skosh in Berlin. And when you work up a hunger and tune into Chef Francesco's ravioli making lesson, streamed from his kitchen in Florence, with new experiences going live most days, from cheese making to Greek mythology, it's easy easy to will while hours away getting a sense of the world beyond. All right, this is live listings are here for our worlds at home in the series. Okay. Seek out the creative inspiration. It sets your imagination on fire, says children author Jacqueline Wilson, luring us into the magical world of London's Tate. More modern paintings give me all sorts of inspiration for my stories, she added. The Tate's not, o- not the only world-renowned gallery throughout open- opening its virtual doors for cultural kids, big and small. The New York Metropolitan Museum of Art program is designed by kids. Click through Cartoon Map to learn fun facts about the artifacts best suited for kids, what, such as Willy the Miniature Egyptian Hippo, that's the museum's unofficial mascot, or head into the time machine to discover art and culture from a particular time and place, and that's a Tate Kids or Meet Kids. Tour the national parks with a ranger. Wow, that, I think this is the Grand Canyon Park. That could be wrong. As a, as a shot pans across the wild ocean, black lava and fiery volcano park, ranger Adri, Adriana Kodlock, Otwakwa doesn't have to say much before entering a captive audience into my household roaming between hypnotic sounds and damp glimpses of the lava lava tube to it the wind wind swept volcanic cliffs Kamalo Atwako's Tori Stelling style voiceover is slow and steady enough for kids and tired parents to absorb. It's also interactive, which helps mainstream attention spans. The Hidden Worlds of the National Park series goes to five US parks including the Bind Canyon in Utah, the Kenyan Fords in Alaska to explore places places most people go here. And this is Hidden World series on Google Arts and Culture. The 10 best virtual tours of our world's national wonders. Wildlife web camera. Oh, it's like an owl. Mindful and addictive all at once. Nonprofit Explorer Org. Catalog is a live cam invites visitors to go on orca spotting one minute 
and perch atop a bald eagle's nest the next. Cruising through the camps is fun, but it's more conservative experience. Head to its education center. Here, more than 300 video photos and lesson plans are organized by location or conserve, conservation-led topics. Younger kids may prefer to tune into live cameras from aquariums such as Plymouth National Marine Aquarium, live octopus feeding, or the leopard sharks filled kept forest of Monterey Bay Aquarium, are swat up on life, wildlife closer to home, barn owls and badgers with the Wildlife Trust web cameras. All right, and that's going to be on explore.org, our Wildlife Trust webcams. Blast off into space. The sky is not the limit when it comes to virtual travels. In 2011, Curiosity Rover traveled for eight months and 352 miles to the land on the surface of Mars via the Access Mars project. Google and NASA have shared some of the data and images collecting them in a 3D replica of the Martian surface. Some may be disappointing to find no aliens, but the interactive web page with facts straight from the scientists offers enlightening slice of space exploration for the perfect ending to space theme day. Beam up to the International Space Station for a series of stories from space. All right, so Access Mars Project is the one for that one. Okay, so we'll get through this together. And so those were the 10 articles that I wanted to point out, and the, the website re will be in the link below. So we have one more story today, so stay with me. Well, that will conclude Loyal World News. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Feel free to like, subscribe, or drop a comment below. If you're on the go, listen to my podcast with the link provided in the description. I will see you tomorrow to share more world news.